Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. And sharks and octopi. Octopi. We also really like two-player games. We do. We did a whole month, two-player month content. We did. A month of two-player content. Yes. Last and today, year. Yes. we've got another two-player game that we're really excited to chat with you about. Really excited. Mm -hmm. And it is called Kelp. So what is Kelp? Well, it's obviously that green seaweed stuff that's floating at the bottom of the ocean. Is it seaweed? I don't know. Actually. Does it classify? It's like a plant underwater. It is a plant. It's yeah. not an animal. But we're not here to talk about ocean plants. We're here to talk about Kelp, the board game. Kelp is designed by Carl Robinson and it's published by Wonderbow Games, who provided us with this prototype copy. Now in Kelp, what you'll do is you'll take the role of either the octopus or the shark. As an octopus, you'll wanna slide around and maneuver through the various kelp to make sure you're not caught. Mm -hmm. But as a shark, you'll wanna catch and eat the octopus. Oh no. Yummy, yummy. Well, with that quick overview out of the way, let's take a look how, at how the game works. As always, you'll begin by setting up. You'll prepare the main board in each of the rolls separately. The shark will gain a bag of dice, the shark deck, and growth tiles. The octopus will gain a deck of cards to start with, cards to learn in the game, and of course blocks, which will start on and off the board. The octopus will place a shark in one of the dens, and at this point the game begins. In kelp, you'll either play as the octopus or the shark. Your goal as the octopus is to either outlast the shark, or to eat all four food blocks. Your goal as the shark is, well, to eat the octopus. As the octopus, on your turn you'll have two actions to take. You can either play a card, draw up to your hand size, or discard one card from your hand and then hide one block if possible. Majority of the game for the octopus is played through the deck of cards. Each card played usually involves the octopus revealing blocks on the game board, providing information to the shark, then taking various actions. Moving, swapping, and shuffling blocks, hiding blocks, learning new cards, which essentially strengthening the octopus deck, and of course, eating blocks. When the octopus is near a food block and the corresponding card is in your hand, you can reveal both and eat. Blocks will not only get you one step closer to victory, but also give you various abilities you can use. Now as a shark, your turn looks vastly different. You'll have mandatory actions and optional ones. Now each turn you must draw and roll dice and move. Everything else is optional. Your dice will guide your gameplay. You'll have current dice which help you navigate the map quickly, moving from high currents to low. You'll have search dice, which help you search the blocks if the value is at least equal or higher. And of course, you'll have strike dice. These allow you to strike a block where the octopus may be. Be careful though, you'll want to avoid traps. Now by moving through currents and searching, you'll be able to contribute dice to your growth track, which will help you grow and unlock abilities as you play on. You'll also be able to use any of the dice you haven't used as energy which you can use to buy shark cards, which will help you add dice to the bag and give you special effects you can use. Now you want to be careful as every time you buy cards or strike, you'll have to place a die into the hunger track. If this track ever gets filled up, you'll lose the game. Now what happens if a strike is successful on the octopus? Well, there's a confrontation. Each player will choose one of the three cards to play. If they match, the shark has countered the defense and wins. However, if they do not, the octopus escapes and can perform the survival strategy on the card. These cards are then discarded, lowering the survival chances in a further confrontation. You'll keep playing until either the shark or the octopus wins, and that's the game of kelp. Will you survive or get eaten? Will you catch your food or go hungry? Who knows? And it all depends on which character you play. So, what did you think of kelp? I really enjoyed kelp. I think even today, like when we're prepping for this video, I found it really hard to find negative things to say about this game. Everything from the production to the design to the, my experience playing it, I want to play this again and again. Yeah, I really enjoy this game, an asymmetrical two-player game. Come on, what more do you want, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that really keeps me going when we do these reviews is like asking what other people would not enjoy about this and 
we'll get into that. But mm -hmm. of course, like from my personal perspective, I think this game is a lot of fun. It's great to play with just me and Ilya, of course, because it is that two player game. And we've enjoyed bo playing both the octopus and the shark. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I think the last thing I'll say to even to top off the sprinkles on the high praise is if we did this in two player month, I think it'd for sure be a contender for my top 10 list. Ooh, look at that. Okay. I'd have to think about that. I'm not 100% You have to certain. ponder a bit more. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. The tiles actually do give me like, um, um, uh, Aqualin vibes. <laughs> and we do love Aqualin. Yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't even think about that connection mm -hmm. of like our favorite is that under the sea theme exactly. too. Exactly. Oh. But let's not get too distracted. Too distracted. And let's talk about why people might want to check Kelp out. Well, the first thing I'll say is the production quality in this game is outstanding. Mm -hmm. It feels like not only is everything really well thought out of design-wise, it's also really reflected in the graphic design and the user experience as well. Yes. The one example I use is the octopus, the way that you have the two action cards. Well, you have spaces to play them, so you always mm -hmm. know how many actions you have. If you draw cards, you can take the draw token, you can put it on top of the card space, and it just flows so smoothly yeah. with the reference cards, with the way the kelp tiles are laid out. It just... Mm -hmm. I agree. The graphic design makes it pretty simple to know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, even just like the cards, the way that they're laid out, the text, and uh, it's pretty obvious like what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I of course love about this game is not only is it a two player game, so me and Ilya can play it like just ourselves, but it's asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about that is it's not just like asymmetrical where there's a lot of different things. Um, there's very very similar things with each character and you're both trying to get like specific points mm -hmm. but it's a head-to-head -head combat game essentially where one's trying to protect themselves and the other is trying to hunt so the way that they've designed those mechanics to really like flow into the game i think is really clever and then on top of that the game progressively gets more and more evolved as you go because you're unlocking new abilities as the shark and then you're adding more cards to your pool as the octopus. So mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. And on top of that too, the mechanics are significantly different for each of them. Exactly, too. yeah. So one yeah. of them is more of a dice placement and more of explore, go see what happens. Where the other one is more dr driven through cards. Mm -hmm. And it's more planning and strategic, almost bluffing your yeah. opponent yeah. a little bit. So each of the shark and the octopus have various traits that if you really like you can be gravitated towards one or the other mm -hmm. i did actually find myself when we were playing like the octopus and the shark like if i was playing the octopus regardless of the outcome i wanted to then play the shark because i was interested then to see my perspective on the other side of it and mm -hmm. i think that's a really good thing to note about the game and also a reason that you might want to check this one out I think it's a good tell of a good balanced game because you always think the other character or player is better. And that's how I felt too. It was just like, I want to be the octopus. What the heck? I'm, mm -hmm. The shark is so hard. But then I play as the octopus and I'm like, no, I want to be the shark. The octopus is so hard. Yes. So I think that balance was just really well integrated into the game. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that too, like speaking of balance, like every time we play, we've played the game, it's been very, very close. <laughs> and I think that speaks a lot to well, the balance of the game and then yep. also just like the way that we've been able to work off of each other while we're mm -hmm. playing the game. I really, really like um, how close they've been. But on top of that, the basic like end game mm -hmm. real is really, really nice because there's ways to like, um, there's the octopus just like gets those four tokens. But then on top of that, you've got like those cards that exactly mm -hmm. like Ilya The confrontation. Was, yeah. And you, you end up coming basic, well, you do come to a 50-50 about whether or not I'm gonna play down the same card that Ilya plays down, and then that like will determine who wins the game. So it's a nice little like way to end the game in, in an intense way, because it's like this yeah. build up. Because the odds could win, because in the beginning mm -hmm. you have like one in third odds, then yeah. you have one in half, but in the third time you know you're like, if the octopus gets caught, it's game that's over, because that's yeah, the exactly. only thing you can do. Yeah. So it's very, very clever. Well, how about things or reasons why you may not want to check this game out? <laughs> the one thing I will say about this game that playing either of the shark or the octopus that I think would deter somebody from playing this mm -hmm. is actually there's times where I felt like I was running around in, this, in circles or mm -hmm. where there was things where I couldn't really manage my board the way that I wanted to and I put myself in a very like at least from my perspective, a very like big disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And that felt like 
that gave me anxiety, I guess. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I was always worried about what Ilya would be doing next because I felt like I was gonna lose that turn or felt like I would get gonna have to go through this confrontation during that turn. So it was a little stressful on that front. Sounds pretty thematic. Mm -hmm. It does, <laughs> it does, it does. The one thing I'll say is memory. Oh yeah. If you don't mm -hmm. have the best memory, like me, uh, this game does require aspects of it because the octopus player, for example, will put tiles back up, potentially shuffle things around. So in your head as a shark, you can be like, okay, the octopus could be here or here. And then like there could be delineations from that and trying to find different ways of where the octopus can go. So you're trying to remember stuff and pay attention as stuff yep. goes. And that goes for the octopus player as well because you're trying to remember what does the shark know? Does the shark know? Has this been flipped before? Do they remember that? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of layers in terms of that. Yeah, I agree. And that actually brings me to the next point that I wanted to bring up mm -hmm. is it is really like a chess type feeling because you're doing that head to head um, player interaction, you still do have the asymmetry, but you're also playing the player. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like this in a lot of two-player games, I would say, where you're always playing against the person you're playing rather than um, playing the game sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you do end up, of course, playing the game, mm -hmm. but you're really adapting your strategy based on how the other person is playing the game. Yeah. And you're really like trying to play mind games essentially. So if that's something that you don't look forward to in a game, I might not recommend checking Kelp out. Well, I think it's your poker face too. Yeah, because I think true. you definitely could be as the octopus somewhere over here. And if you're just like, <laughs> yeah. maybe, yeah. then it, and like if you, if you can't really hold a straight face of where to go, because you're going to know where your octopus mm -hmm. is. And you could potentially give it away with your facial expression. So if you're that type of person, this game could not be that much fun for you. Yeah, I actually even remember like grabbing, going to grab some of the tokens on the board. And I had a decision of like, I could exchange some or like show certain ones, but often I was never going to show the octopus. And the unfortunate thing about that is if I was moving my hands around the board, it was, it was kind of a good tell that the ones that I was like putting my hands over were maybe not the octopus. Or maybe so, that's what or, he wants yeah, me to think. Or maybe that's how I wanted to play the game. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I know that was not the case, but still. <laughs> It, maybe he's fibbing now mm -hmm. to try to outsmart me in strategy the in the future. next time we play. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But overall, what do we think? I think this game is fantastic. I like two-player asymmetric games. It's got a great theme to it. It's a lot of fun to play. And it, I don't know, it, prov it hits the right spots because I can play the shark or I can play the octopus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one checked all the boxes for me. I can see this becoming part of a regular rotation for our two-player games. I think the one thing I'll say too is I am a person who typically does not like asymmetric games because, especially multiplayer, because mm -hmm. it's, I want to know what everyone's doing, why they're doing it. But in this one, it felt so easy. And obviously there's only two characters, but it felt really easy to understand what each of the characters is doing, how they're played, what the strategy could be. So this is also potentially a really good introduction to asymmetric games because we can definitely scale up and see, hey, we can all do different things, but we can still connect in one way or another over this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a very good point. Well, that's Kelp, Shark versus Octopus. Mm -hmm. We've really enjoyed this. If you think you might enjoy this or you have other thoughts on this game, let us know down in the comments below. Mm -hmm. I believe we have a question of the day. Now, today's question of the day is a little bit educational. Ooh. Uh, I realized from our earlier question is that Tyler and I don't know too much about kelp. Yeah, so we encourage you to lay a fun fact about kelp. Or any other ocean fact, because that would be fun. I wanted to learn about kelp. Well, hopefully somebody talks about kelp in the comments. <laughs> well, if you know kelp or ocean facts, you can comment down below. Let us know, because that's our question of the day. And if you enjoyed this video, Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button if you are new here because we make weekly board game content where we talk mm -hmm. about games like this. Oh, and we completely forgot. This game is coming to crowdfunding. It sure so is. So make sure to check out that page. There's also a mini expansion you can get if you pre-order the game. Mm. So we'll do that link down below. You can click the link, learn more, learn about the mini expansion yes. and sign up to potentially play this game in the future. And then we can compare thoughts mm -hmm. on who indeed is the best. Exactly. The shark the octopus, or the kelp. Or the kelp. <gasps> the real winner. <laughs> the real winner. Yeah. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.